Good morning, Zodiac, and welcome to Soul Family Read for the 28th of October, 2021, a year that will live in infamy, I am sure of that. Ethereal <laughs> Visions Illuminated Tarot Deck, that's what we're using today. Here at the new Casa in Cancun, uh, fortunately it's still quiet. We do have a house, or I guess it's like a small apartment couple houses over going up and get noisy in the morning but hopefully I'm out ahead of them here it's pretty early um, just quiet jungle feel can't believe I'm in, in Cancun um, I really didn't have any intentions of staying here I kind of want to stay here as little as uh, time as I needed um, but I'm very comfortable now and you know, I think we're here at least for six months and you know, you know if you know me it's like you know boy I'm a sad it's like um, it's never, you know, home is where the heart is. <laughs> and, um, I'll jump around. But I don't I don't want to deal long term with hurricanes. I really don't feel like this is a bit. The only place I've been in Mexico for two years now is Yucatan Peninsula. And if I'm going to stay here, then it's going to be over in the Yucatan State on the Gulf side. That's a possibility. And we end up. Frankly, it's a little bit cheaper if you're interested in Mexico. Uh, that's probably a little bit cheaper there to get a, a place with a water view, but now it's the Gulf, not it's just like Florida, you know. The Gulf is not the Mexican Riviera over here on Cancun and Playa del Carmen and Tulum. Yeah. Not the same. But. What's really nice about the Gulf Coast and same with Florida, I've lived in both, you know, I've lived in Florida several times, like the warm weather. Um, you don't have to get up early and you can watch the sunset. You sit and drink a glass of wine, drink a beer on your deck, on the water, and you watch the sunset easy peasy, you know, in the evening. Um, sounds like a little thing, but I take it. So, you know, I was thinking about, uh, I don't know why, I was thinking about, it wasn't that long ago, you remember when uh, Mercury in retrograde bumped into uh, the Sun conjunct uh, Mars and Libra. Now, that, to, I just, I, I gotta write this up, because I see the planets, they're just like people, uh, and they have these, you know, personalities and, and stuff, agendas and reality, and they interact, and that's what astrology is, so... You know, the sun, you know, that's the king, you know, that's the king, <laughs> that's the main deal. Nothing without the sun. Uh, but there's there's Mars, you know, the warrior. Let's be real, just a warrior. That's in Libra. So they're going to this function, it's like social function. It's like a military ball. That would really work. And here comes Mercury, and it's like Mercury's like, well, you know, I'll stop in. Mercury knows everybody. Mercury can go anywhere. Mercury works for the sun. Mercury is back with the sun. Mercury is in retrograde with his, her sun at this point, you know. Um, and Mars is there, okay. To me, it was like, there, you've got uh, Mars, this old crusty soldier, you know. Um, and um, like chesty puller or something in my mind, you know. Uh, his officer come running and said, oh my God, we're surrounded and we're almost out of ammunition and we're outnumbered 100 to 1. What are we going to do? And he grabbed him by the collar and he said, My God, man, don't you see how lucky we are? Now those fuckers got to come in close so we can kill them with our knives. <laughs> he meant it too. I'm not saying Mars is wise or right. Mars. So there's Mars dressed up, refined as it can be for this occasion, some kind of state meeting kind of important you know it's ceremonial too it's symbolic it's all symbolic symbolism matters and there's mercury who knows everyone knows anything mercury can go in and out of hell mercury goes into the lowest bar looks underneath the table where the chewing gum is he's in the highest realms of the castle and power and that's uh, mercury and i just think mercury is there you know it's exactly like uh, some old uh, pro and with intelligence that's been the desk jockey, desk jockey Mercury, but, 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 you know, knows everyone, uh, can get things done, make things happen by communication. How? 
uh, sit at the phone and it's like bargain and barter and understand and weave and work and work magic. Uh, Mercury is the magician card in tarot. Um, oops, I just saw we have, uh, I'm going to hold it too. Uh, Jim Morrison, King of Cups on the bottom. Ooh, 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 my favorite card in this deck. Looks just like Jim Morrison. Yeah. So anyway, this is the thing. It's all stately and they're dressed up and they're refined and they're using their best manners. But Mars is looking out from this cold blue eyes. And it doesn't give a fuck. It's just got to understand Mars. It doesn't give a fuck. And Mars is looking around, and Mars is listening, and particularly listening to Mercury, because the old soldier respects, you know, the old desk jockey here. They're both working for the king. They're both doing the king's work. They're really doing the same work, just in different ways. And one thing about Mars, this is getting ready to go into Scorpio, and holy fuck, in my opinion, Mars and Scorpio is the perfect general. And Mars and Scorpio is all about using power in like the best way. Right here in Libra, in this meeting, man, I think there was a lot of gathering of information. And Mars, it, it's getting ready to set up. It's like, uh, you know, in Breaking Bad, they did the scene uh, where he kills everyone, like seven different huge criminal masterminds uh, at, within the same moment. You know, orchestrating it all. Um, it's that kind of energy. Mars is making plans. Mars is setting up. Um, and this is our lives, I feel. I feel it's kind of being missed. It's like uh, as energy goes direct, there's still a lot of important energy not going direct. Uh, Neptune, most notably, and Uranus ain't playing for a while. Um, but nevertheless, you know, Mars is our will. And Mars, uh, our, how we make, when we make a decision, we make it with Mars. When we take action, take it with Mars. If it's in the good advice of Mercury in our natal charts, harmoniously aspect of Mars and Mercury, uh, typically we're capable of uh, taking actions uh, in our best benefit. We can think things through and take actions. That's how that works. You know? Mercury, thoughts and thinking, Mars, action. So I don't know what's that theme for me today. I was thinking about writing stuff up on it, but I didn't. <coughs> I have some work today, but um, I like it too, you know, because it, it's not about ego, uh, it's really not, I mean, um, it's about manifestation, the proper use of power, I mean, there is power, there is an ego, there is Mars and Scorpio, there is Mars and Aries, that is part of our reality, um, and there is the fifth house, and there's a healthy ego, um, so it's really a place right here because I, again i keep thinking the lion's gate 88 huge patterns are being set for all of us almost all of us 20 30 year long patterns what we're at an age think about it with well, the next 20 30 years going to define you you're 30 it's the meat of your life you're 60 it's the end of your life you know these are strong patterns um and so why not have this be a time where we really need to get attention and get into the game and you know grab a hold of the steering wheel and steer the ship like if, if ever there was a time to just grab a hold of the steering wheel and steer the ship you know be grateful for the ship whatever with the ship make it whatever kind of ship you want but decide where we want it to go and that's what Mars and Mercury have been talking about and I think like coming up now in November time frame, Scorpio time frame, you know, uh, a lot of things are going to be really sorted out and planned in very great detail. Uh, and then by the time Sagittarius rolls around, um, boom, things start going to pop it off. You got the eclipses and everything. Um, so I think we have kind of another month of intense energy, internal energy. It's just my life. I can roll with this. <laughs> You know, very Scorpio, I have Pluto on my AC, you know, Scorpio, Venus, and everything. Um, so it might be a little intense. I gotta think in the outer uh, big picture, uh, global uh, picture, which I try to stay out of, but like more and more I just can't. It's just getting so insane. 
as the Pluto, Pluto return is building for the United States and, and things seem to be going kind of nuts. I got to think this month of November now, come on, this has got to be the, something got to pop, something got to pop, you know, in the collective here. Um, and it's going to pop off, pop, 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 pop it off for us constantly uh, based upon our natal positions, in my opinion. So, Nine of Swords, this is where we're at in the round relationships, where our mind is at, where our heart is at. You know, here's what I'm thinking, Mars and Mercury, we're talking about. We want to slay this stuff forever. All the negative stuff, the DNA, the ancestry, even the cultural stuff, the stuff we're born into, leaves us feeling haunted like this, this woman with her um, head in her hands sobbing and got these uh, horrible looking ghosts like literally laughing at her because um, it, it gets so internal um, so one thing I've learned that's been a hard lesson uh, is anything that's internal well that's exactly what, what I do have control over you know they say you know uh, God gives the strength to accept the things we cannot change and the strength to change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference and the difference is very simple only thing we control is ourselves and so it's super duper simple nothing else we control this is totally in our control this is minor arcana this is personal energy this is feeling tortured in any way there's still something that needs to be let go it's a nine it's close ten you're done you're out you're not haunted anymore with 10 because, you know, you are a ghost. You're done. Okay, guys. Wow. Devil card. This is what's blocking us. I don't really think we need to look at this as being uh, reversed. We could look at this as Pluto now direct in Capricorn. Where is that in your chart? Because that's doing things. Now you talk about the collective. I don't want to go off on that. But Pluto, just remember... Pluto's in the sign of government in the very late stages. It's going to be there for a minute more, and it's doing some very important work. And it's always underground work. It's always in the basement where Pluto works, always in the darkness, always in the secrets, you know. But now, something's going to come out. But in this regard, I think being a blocking, you know, it's, uh, it's some, it becomes some kind of obsession. You know, a uh, coping mechanism, maybe. Yeah. You know, I have to go back a little bit to the mushrooms for me. But I had the strange experience, and um, um, they ended up uh, talking to me in, in my mind for like a period of five months. It was like an amazing five months. Um, and, and just kind of like as I was thinking in real time, sort of helping me kind of integrate my own mind. Uh, and I was doing, I think, what this is. Uh, and I remember very distinctly. And I remember thinking to myself, I forgot what it was. This was in 2007. Um, and um, I remember thinking, oh, I'm so, I'm just so stupid. I, I really am stupid. I can't, I'm just not very smart or whatever. And the voice in my head, very as it always did, very succinctly, very calmly, very lovingly, very supportingly, said, David, the problem with all of that is right now you're completely avoiding everything. And that's the biggest problem. So you need to go back and instead of dismissing it by saying you're not smart enough and not dealing with it, you need to deal with this. Because once you deal with it, you don't have to deal with it again voice in my head says um, and it's that kind of negative talk uh, that's like the pattern um, I, I'm not capable of, of fixing this problem this is you know it's like uh, there's some part of me that I just am never my abandonment stuff that's that's the core for me you know, let's go there and I say to myself, I'm, I'm never, ever going to deal with that abandonment stuff. It's, it's on me forever like a ghost. It's like smoke that gets in your clothes and your skin. You can't get it out. It's all over you. 
but it doesn't have to be like that. But that's what the devil wants me to believe. Yeah? Bodily feelings, devil, PTSD, the devil. Poor belief systems, the devil. Illness later, over time, the devil, this energy of denying reality like that voice was trying to say. The biggest problem right now, you need to go back and, and just deal with the, it, it went on to explain it. it said, okay, you did make a mistake, but what's important now, let's go back and look at why, what were the circumstances, what can you learn from it? And it was like, trust me, there's a lot there to unpackage. Uh, and um, sure enough, it was, and that was a big lesson for me. And that was kind of how they helped me with my own mind, really. Uh, Ace of the Hole, King of Cups, Jim Morris and the Cool King, got the Pisces energy. Uh, look at this, can't make it up. Eight of Cups, this is advice from spirit now for us with this situation. This coming in as a Nine of Swords, okay? But the advice is the Eight of Cups, so it's in our heads it's thought patterns, I think it with me, right? But emotionally is how it needs to be released. What we need to think about is our emotional self. So really for me, I, it comes down to this, I do get this. <coughs> Excuse me, but I'm a Cancer Moon, you know? It's really about how I feel. And it's as simple as that. That's as simple as that. It's like. If I'm in any given situation and it really doesn't feel right, at that point, it's like I really don't even have to think about it anymore. It's just no. Um, and that's what this Eight of Cups is. And it's about just emotionally being able to walk away from this. I mean, honestly, I feel it. I feel it. But it's taken like a lifetime. You know, and this is childhood stuff. One way or another, it's pretty hard stuff here. It's not little stuff. Dealing with one way or another. When you got the devil, um, don't let the devil throw you, you know. You always talk about the story of the uh, bargain, the deal, making a deal with the devil, how it never works. I don't think that's true, actually. <laughs> Think about it. You think it never works? I think sometimes it works. There's a lot of ways to slay this dragon. And the outcome is the Ten of Wands. Really good we have the King of Cups here. It's overall energy. But this being the outcome, it's not easy to do. It's not going to happen right away. But increasingly, we're going to feel the burden of carrying this. What is really emotional, it seems mental, but it's emotional. Seems mental, but it's emotional. That's the key. And these are actions, real burdens, feeling really burdened, wanting to get to the village and just put that down, or going on and on and on until you almost think you can't do it anymore. And I think we're getting to that point. It's the energy of a square in astrology or an approaching square in a transit, and as that approaching square becomes exact, the pressure becomes greater and greater, like a vice, like a nut being cracked. And eventually, this is why we take action. We resolve the square. Like the voice said, by going back and examining the situation, yes, uh, why was it a mistake? Why did you make it? Can you learn anything from it? What were the exact circumstances of it? instead of just turning away from it and being, it's really shame for me. I'm ashamed to make a mistake. That's what it is, you know? Um, so it's like, I kind of don't want to deal with it. I'm ashamed of not understanding things, so I don't want to deal with it. Um, Cause I always think shame was nothing for me. So this is about an emotion. We got to get to the emotion of it. Cause I don't, you know, I don't have a lot of shame. Like with sex, I kind of associated with that. But I realize I do have shame. If a relationship feel, uh, fails, I feel so ashamed. I feel so, such shame. As if it's a shameful thing. Maybe it is, but that's just a strong feeling. Um, that's how I associate it. So there's the feeling coming from it. Not wanting to deal with it. And um, yeah, I feel it. 
I think I'm on this, guys. I'm gonna be honest with you. But you know, I I figure this is my reading too. Um, and the overall energy, I think it's important, um, is the King of Cups, no joke. Um, it's really time to lighten up. It's time to be done with all this. Um, it's more, um, I, I, there's a meme with Bernie Sanders, and it's like, you know, it's like I'm diving back in to do more shadow work. God help me, there's no end to this shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's what this is, diving back in to finish up some shadow work and get rid of this burden and just be cool. So close. <laughs> Please share this reading, guys. Anybody's watching this, uh, on wherever you can think to share it, uh, platforms, uh, I'd like to try to get it out. I always think Terrence McKenna, McKenna is kind of my hero. Uh, find the others, the Bard. If you don't know him, simply uh, YouTube the Bard. You should listen to his voice nasally, but um, a madman, a genius, mad genius. Food of the Gods, uh, amazing book. Um, you can get the PDF for free if you'd like nowadays. I'm sure there's uh, much information about it too uh, to be had, like on YouTube through uh, Terrence uh, giving many lectures over the years. Um, so give me a like, thumbs up. Uh, tell a friend to tell a friend and do subscribe.